Let's get it. In season six of Sister Wives, Robin is asked by Cody to talk to the young adults in the family about her sexual experience and how she lost her purity to the wrong man. Now, I addressed talking to your kids about this very sensitive subject before, but I just wanted to touch on a couple things that I think needs to be added to this ever-expanding conversation, because realistically, this is not a one-and-done conversation. This isn't something you just kind of read to them as a Apple <laughs> Terms of Service agreement where you just kind of blow through it one good time so you can get to the good stuff. This is something that you really should be talking to your children about all the way up, even through their developmental years, and not necessarily talking to them about the nitty-gritty or the explicit nature of what happens between to uh, adults who love each other and want to make more people. But if you talk to them about things like responsibility, uh, self-love, taking care of themselves, goal realization, those types of things, in order for you to build up to the eventual conversation that you want to have regarding this particular subject. Now, what I'd like to talk about first is the idea that boys and girls need to be taught responsibility rather than fear. And what do I mean by fear? What I mean by fear is a lot of kids are told early on that don't do this or you're going to get pregnant. So you have a fear of pregnancy. What happens if you get pregnant? Your life is over. Your life is destroyed. You Nobody's ever going to want you. You're going to die alone except for that little kid that you have. And that's not true. Your life will be different. And that's the first part of it. We have to be honest about all these things. So it's nothing to necessarily be afraid of, but you have to be aware. So it's more of a warning than it is a fear tactic is part of the overall conversation. Be afraid of disease. If you mess around, you're going to get sick. And then next thing you know, uh, ain't nobody going to want you. You're going to die alone. Like, and everything always winds up with you dying alone. If you get sick, people get sick all the time. Things happen. Now, is it ideal that you want to get sick and it's kind of, you know, something you want to shoot for and it's an easy thing to dismiss? No, but you have to be aware. Again, we have to be honest. Then, of course, there's the fear of the other parent or the fear of your parents. So you have a fear of parents and authority. You have to keep this thing a secret because if you're involved with this kind of thing, then you will be viewed negatively or in a certain kind of light. And this is actually very damaging for a number of reasons and very precarious for a number of reasons. For instance, if you have a situation where kids are feeling like they want to participate in this and maybe they go right up to the line or they don't necessarily want to go all the way. They just want to kind of hug and kiss and do a little, little light like pet pet. If something does happen, then now they are challenged with the idea of do I tell somebody because they may assume that I did something wrong. And that's also part of the problem is, is that we push the idea of guilt. And in this particular case of Sister Wives, Robin's whole uh, speech was really rooted around the idea of you feeling guilty for participating in this. And that's a, that's a huge disservice because there is nothing more natural about a human being wanting to be with another human being. There's, that's completely natural. And you're asking them by trying to put that fear in them and reason with them and rationalize with them to go against the natural state of who they are. So when they feel this thing, and you spend your time telling them that if you do this, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're nasty, you're evil, you're disgusting, nobody's going to want you, you're going to die alone. 
and you spend all your time saying this to them, then when they have these urges to do that thing that you've been telling them is wrong, they start to feel like they are wrong and they start to rebel. They start to act out. Well, if I'm going to be wrong, I might as well be all the way wrong. I might as well be wrong all the time. And that's how you can actually push them into something, a situation that you don't necessarily want them to be in. And you're spending your entire time trying to avoid. There's also the idea of you being honest. And when I say being honest in truth, you telling them it's a terrible experience, it's horrible, it's scary, uh, you mess around with the wrong one, it's going to feel like this, and it, it's not even that good. Look, it's good. It feels good. It feels great. <laughs> okay? It's going to make you feel wonderful. There's a reason why so many people are trying to do it. It's not a bad thing. So for you to tell them and tell that lie, you're only discrediting yourself. So when you do talk to them about any one of the things that I mentioned, you try to give them honesty and pregnancy, disease, uh, sexual responsibility, that everything you say becomes suspect. There's also a part of this whole segment where Robin was asked to speak to the kids that you could feel that a lot of this was directed towards the young ladies. Even with regard to the way Cody and the wives talk to the young women about how they dress and how they carry themselves and how they are perceived, how they approach life, whether they're kissing people, when they should kiss people, if they should kiss people, who they spend their time with, so on and so forth. And there's a lot of protection that goes on with the young ladies. Now, as a as a girl dad, I understand that. I understand that you want to give your daughters the most protection as possible. But for me, I think that the strongest protection you can give them is the responsibility of knowing that their bodily autonomy is theirs and theirs alone. They have a decision to make on who and when and how everything happens. And it's their responsibility to make sure they're servicing themselves. It's not on me because if I take that responsibility, I'm taking that responsibility from her and I'm not empowering her and I'm not creating a responsible person. Merely I'm creating a dependent person. There's also a point where with the boys, you should be just as clear with the young men as you are with the young ladies. Now, because there's always this fantasy that with the, the young men that they can go out, it's okay if they do it, but the same arguments and the same fear that you would try to instill in your daughters, you can talk to your young men about, and young men should be talked to about those things. For instance, the fear of pregnancy. Oh, you tell the girls, you know, mama's baby, papa's maybe. Well, guess what? For me, the way I am raised, and I was raised in a way I raised my son, if you go out and you make somebody pregnant, that is your responsibility. Her life isn't over and her she's not going to be the only person impacted. You're going to be impacted as well because that's your responsibility. You have just as much responsibility to make sure that that child is taken care of and has the things that it needs as she does. And the thing about it is, as a young man growing up, if you have a child, that child is going to look to you the same way you look to me. So you have to start building yourself up. And the best way for you to do that is for you to be responsible about your sexuality so that you can have children when you're ready to have them and you can provide the things you need for that child as they grow and they get older and their needs change. Now, if you have a child, is your life over? No, it's not over. The same thing with the girls. Your life ain't over. It's just going to be way different. And to a degree, it's going to be a little more difficult because you're going to have somebody who is res you're responsible for. When it comes to disease, guys get sick too. Like why we push that on girls and, and then when, when it comes to guys, like, oh, just, you know, take care of yourself, take precautions and it'll be okay. Not with everything. And you have to be careful who you're laying down with. Where you're talking to young men, you want to tell them, be responsible with how you carry yourself. And this is critical for young guys. Be responsible for how you carry yourself. It's not enough for you to go out and just run wild and then you say something happens, a young lady gets pregnant, and then you want to complain about having to pay child support or being responsible for a child when you don't even like the mother. 
Well, that's something that you have to consider before you go and participate in an activity that is specifically designed to make people. That's what the activity is. Like we all, we dress it up and we try to pretend it's something else. But I mean, when you break down to the bare bones, that's what it is. It's an activity that is designed to replicate and duplicate and create people. So don't be surprised when you create a person. There's also the part where guys get kind of in their feelings. Every guy has that kind of fish story where the young man comes over to visit their daughter and they look him in the face and say, young man, let me talk to you for a minute just to let you know I'm not afraid of going to prison or just to let you know if you mess with my daughter the wrong way, you know, whatever you do to her, I'm going to do to you. Or if you go too far with my daughter, you're going to turn up missing and I'll have you in the trunk and I'll be a part of the search party looking for you. I'm telling you, don't do it. And there's always that kind of thing. And I participated in it and it's, you know, it's kind of jovial. I've never done it to a young man. And here's the secret to the sauce. I'm a girl dad, so I understand that kind of thing. But at the same time, I'm also a boy dad. I have a son. So with that being said, if I ever found out that my son went somewhere and some grown ass man had threatened to harm my child, we are going to have a conversation and it's going to be smoking the city when I get over there. Because whatever you say you're going to do to him, I want you to do to me because I'm here and I'm ready for it. And we can talk to each other on an equal plane because the same way I'm not going to let somebody come into my daughter's life and harm her. I'm not going to let some joker come into my son's life and threaten and to harm him because you're afraid of what your daughter's going to do. We're not going to do that. Everybody is responsible for themselves. I teach my, my kids, boy and girl, to be respectful of themselves and others. And I expect anybody they spend time with, that person will be of a certain caliber and character as well. So my expectation is that they are going to carry themselves responsibly. And I expect my, I certainly expect my son to carry himself responsibly. Now, if there's some kind of issue or there's a problem, please don't hesitate to pick up the phone and call me and we could definitely talk about it. But what we're not going to do is just because my son comes over to your house to court or talk to your daughter, all of a sudden that opens him up to be berated and threatened. Or you try to belittle him or emasculate him so that that way you feel like you're kind of running stuff. We're not playing that game either. When we talk about young ladies taking a position that if boy, it's okay for boys to do it, then it's okay for me to do it. Two wrongs don't make a right. It's not okay for anybody to be irresponsible with themselves. With that being said, I'm not making, I'm not going to sit here and make a judgment call on how people conduct themselves. I will simply say that first and foremost, I know that's a big excuse that, oh, guys do it. And when the guys do it, they're studs. But if a woman does it, she's something else. I'm not going to say it here. But when push comes down to shove, let's be honest, there's not a lot of studs running around. Most guys are lying about it and they're not honest about it. The guys who get a lot of females are usually a small percentage of guys and they typically get a lot of females that got most guys don't just like most women aren't like the, the ladies that you see on YouTube or in some of these manosphere videos where they're always gold diggers or only fans models or IG models or they only want to date guys who are worth four million dollars and they demand that their guys make at least six figures to even talk to them <laughs> that's not a majority of women it's a very small amount of women, but if you focus on this target group, it seems like it's everybody. But even if we pretend like, oh, it is everybody and the guys are running wild, you will become good at the thing that you practice. Do the things that are necessary for you to attain the goal that you set for yourself. So if you want to be in relationships, then you want to be, you want to conduct yourself in a way that's conducive to being in relationships. You create habits of a person who is in a relationship and that makes you more likely to find the relationship that you want. If you want to be a wild single person, male or female, and you want to bring people home every week, 
then understand that that's what it is. You're not going to be running around all through your 20s into your 30s. And then by the time you hit 35, you're going to flip a switch. And all of a sudden, you boyfriend, girlfriend, marriage material. It, that's just not how life works. You will be the thing that you train to be. One of the things that really bothered me about Robin's speech towards these young adults was the idea that you have one purity and if you have to give it to your husband and if you give your purity to somebody else you'll ruin your life and it'll be all over i gave my purity to the wrong boy it was like he wanted it and he took it and etc 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 look robin's experience with her ex-husband and having the three children put her in a position where she could eventually meet Cody and have her additional two children with him and join the family. Had it not been for her experiences with that previous man and having those children, she very well may not have been sitting in a position where she would have attained the family that she had. Now, I understand there's going to be people that, you know, you may feel some regret about dating or doing certain things with, but when push comes down to shove, you have to take from those experiences, learn from those experiences, and move past those experiences. If anything, you want to be there to talk to and counsel your kids to make better decisions initially. And if they make a bad decision, please don't do what Robin did, which was compound a bad decision with an even worse decision. If you mess around with a guy and this isn't necessarily the person you want to be with or young lady and it's not the person you want to be with and you guys, you know, hit the <laughs> hit the copy button and you reproduce yourself, you try to figure out how you can manage that co-parenting situation and you don't make a worse mistake by trying to ram a coupling on the two of you or force a coupling and get married. That only makes the situation worse. With this subject, I think that it's a continuing subject. Maybe some point later, I'll come back and address something else. Or if you want to leave a comment down below and continue the conversation, I think it's a worthwhile conversation for people to have, not only with their kids, but with other adults so that we can come to a better way of talking to our kids about this very important life experience. That's my take. I'm James. This has been my take on reality. And I'm out. Cause I've been living life right like I could.